Uh, welcome everybody to uh, the Monday, August 15th meeting of the Stockbridge Assessors. Uh, Doug and I are here at the town offices and um, Tom Stokes is remote. So just a general question. Now, is Tom being recorded? He should be, because he's I on I think here. so. So like all of the, so if I, I've never done playback. So if you play back, you can see everybody that's present. Yes. Okay. Yep, because I watched the um, selectman meeting last week and they had quite a few people zoomed in. Yeah. They did focus like right on them as soon as they talked. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you um, hold off for just a second? I need to adjust something here. Sure. Okay, sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, so um, last, last meeting minutes, um, we've basically carried over number two, number three, and what we're gonna be discussing in executive session. Number two, update on the fiscal year 23 recertification evaluations. Um, so the residential is complete. The only thing that I have left is or left to work on before we actually meet with the state is finishing up the income approaches on the commercial properties, running off the rest of the reports, which is easy to do, and plugging in all the new personal property um, values. This morning, uh, well, Tammy and I have worked on it, but she mostly did the second homeowner study. And today I calculated what the percentage is gonna be. It's basically the same thing we've been using for the last five years. And we're actually lucky we got to that percentage. I think the next, well, technically the state won't require us to do this for another five years. I think maybe we should discuss if we should do another one of these before that five years is up, just so we could get a better turnout, um, have more time to do it instead of rushing through it on a certification year. Because, um, you know, there were 700 forms that were sent out and what did we get back? like 350 at best. Mm -hmm. And now typically you can impose a fine on the ones that did not get you know, returned. And typically we get enough so we can get through the study. But I think when the state sees it, I wouldn't be surprised if they put it in as a recommendation going forward that we, we don't wait until the last five, you know, the last year in the fifth year of the certification to redo it again. Um, it just seems like, again, I know it's a monumental task in filling these forms out. And it's not so much the, you know, at this point, we just don't get the number that we need back. And it's just like the last three that we've done are almost a repeat of, every, and maybe that's the way it's gonna be going forward. It's, it's a tough thing to fill out. Uh, it's a lot to ask for, but if we were to do it maybe in like a, two year cycle, you know, send out half one year and, and do it, or we could just do, I don't know if the state would allow us to do it piecemeal, it's only a certain percentage each year, but we definitely can find out if, if that would be easier to get more of the 700 back and go from there. It's so Michael, could you explain how the surveys generate the percentage and how the percentage is? Yeah, so, the, so basically, um, once we gathered all of the forms that we've mentioned, you know, several times at our meeting, the forms that were sent out to the second homeowners to itemize basically everything that's in, the, well, not everything, but, you know, uh, most of the tangible items in the second home itself. And this isn't just for the uh, lakefront properties, it's every single second homeowner that got one of these forms. We use that information to do a second homeowner study 
which will produce a percentage of which will be used against the building values of all the second homeowners properties, not the land values, not the outbuildings, just the building value itself. And, and the simple calculation is, and Tammy last week went through and actually entered the amounts that she totaled up everything. If, if there wasn't a total done by the second homeowner, Tammy went through and totaled up all the items and put a little sticky note on each one. So then she went through and I asked her to take the spreadsheet that had the um, replacement cost, less depreciation, which is the building value, plug in the amount that she found and add it up on each form. And then I take it from there and the calculation is basically dividing the amount that's listed. So let's say, you know, you have $50,000 worth of um, items in your home that is divided by the building value to come up with a percentage. We then sort that from high to low and we come on, we look for the, again, it's all about the middle on everything we do, the, the, the median. And is it 1%? Is it 2%? Is it 3%? It's 2%. So, That's, and then we take that 2%, sit down on with each single record that is still listed as a second homeowner, and we multiply the, the value. We're working on the new values right now. That's why we have to wait to the very end of the reval to do this study, because you have to run off of the new building values, not last year's building values. So once we have that in, we will then type in manually every single one and then that will be multiplied by whatever the town's tax rate is come fall. And that generates the final bill. So it's so in this case, it's 2% of the building value only, no land value whatsoever. Right. So if yep. someone's- Condos too, if because condos don't have value. So it's just the the exact building value. And, it, and it's, it's no different on a reval year um, than it is on a, a interim year. It's just the final thing that I have to do before we submit because the values typically have to be in there. Uh, because every single one, if your valuation went up, so will your personal property bill seeing that we're using the same percentage that we've used in the last five years. But I think we just have to determine, you know, at this point is, you know, are we getting a proper representation with 2% or should we be, you know, diving a little bit deeper and you know what would that be if we got 600 forms back you know but it's a, that that is a, a personal choice as to whether or not um a second homeowner wants to return that form to us so with that being said so if someone had their house was or the building was um assessed for five hundred thousand, and somebody's assessed for a million theoretically the person with a million just would be twice as much as the yes. assessment yep. and also there's no there's no problem. So if your assessment or if your study said that you had easy math, 200,000, if 2% represents something less than that, they're only going to get the 2% of the building amount. Right. So in other words, there's no, no stare, carrot or stick by doing the survey because the survey gets put into a percentage and it's applied against the entire. Right. And, there, and again, there's never any names listed. It's all, always location, map, and lot number, and account number for their personal property account. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's, you know, that'll, that'll be 600 plus accounts that we're going in and changing. And, you know, even in the end, when you're, when you're doing a 2%, it's not that much, you know, when you're multiplying it by a, a tax rate that's in the, you know, could potentially be in the $8 range. We don't know that yet. It's just one of those things, you know, you can't rush it because, and again, there's still some that are coming in, you know, those, those will just be waiting because we, we, we finalized that today. We have to have it done. So the state knows what we're using. So again, if someone said that, Hey, I had $5,000 worth of stuff and, or if they said I have $300,000 worth of stuff, it, it's irrelevant because it's only going to be a percent, 2% of the building amount. Yes. And I think that might be why we don't get a big return because I have a feeling if people were to list basically everything that they have, I, we get a lot of phone calls where they say, is this what you're basing, you know, my personal property bill on? And I, and we both explain to them, no, it's, it's a study to come up with a percentage. And I think if you've got a few second homes, most communities will use, you know, whatever they're listing. We have so many that the state requires us to do a study. And um, it's never really changed. The, it's, it's a pretty simple study. It's just getting that data into our office 
And typically, you know, I would think again, maybe on the next update and we'll wait and see what the state says to do this earlier. So we could resend them out and say, look, we've sent you a copy back in November. You know, what we need now it's April and we haven't received anything. You know, give them enough time to get it back so you're not rushing into the next certification year. We've never really done that. It's always been, well, we know how this works. We know the response we get, but I, I would, maybe it's a good thing to just mention it to the DOR and saying, you know, are you guys comfortable with what we've been doing? You know, are there any suggestions? Um, obviously the higher the percentage, the more you're taking in for personal property in the end. And I know that the I know the yeah. higher percentage, right? And I mean, higher I percentage of return. No. And do we, do we feel 50% uh, is adequate to in the state's eyes that they're not going to make us do another mailing? Oh yeah. We, be, we got exactly, almost exactly the same amount. It's actually a little weird. Um, exactly the same amount that we got last time when we did this. What if we, you know, and almost by the same people too. Yeah. I mean, it's What if we were a little proactive and we, um, you know how you just explained how you get you arrive at that number. Mm -hmm. What if we sent out you know something that was about a page to everybody so that maybe they weren't so reticent in not sending us that's the a, yeah, information? That's a good idea because I think they they are hesitant. Yeah, I would. So I mean, I would could, be hesitant if you could give them an example like you just explained. You you may get a better response. Yeah, because I, I think and people might be untruthful. Mm -hmm. If they think that they're above average, yep. and they right. it, it all comes. When you explain to them what it is, they're like, "Oh, okay." You know, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not. Yeah. And I and we try to explain the impact because we know that you know it. It's very intrusive. I admit yeah. it. You know, I mean, it, it's and the thing is that the Department of Revenue, it, all it is is like you do this. You know, you have to run this yeah. study, but they don't really see when you've got six hundred plus second homeowners yeah. that they you know the that is. That could be extremely confusing yeah. and, the and intrusive. Yeah. And I just think if we were, um, you know, proactive and we did, you know, maybe one sheet that explained it and then one with an, a hard example. Absolutely. Um, we have a cover that letter. Actually that see, I, our I cover letter better, I would say, is not the greatest. I mean, you know, we, we're still listing an, an example that the the DOR gave us many, many moons ago. And people are like, you really want to know what linens I have? You know, and it's in the example. And, and honestly, no, it's, you know, the big ticket items. Yeah. When, when you're not listing appliances and, I mean, even if you're not here the full year, I'm pretty sure you still have your stove, refrigerator, washer, dryer, mm -hmm. and, the, and the essentials that most people have. And, yeah. and most of them don't list that. Yeah. Well, I think, and those I, are the big items that, you know. I think before we start saying that we're going to find them, um, we'll just. Oh, yeah. And I don't ever they bring that up. Help us get to 75%. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're probably Absolutely. going to get past 75%. Yep. Yeah, that would be a, an absolute yeah. miracle. So, you know, say so our goal would be that. to increase our response by 25%. And, you know, it may, in fact, you know, bring the number down, you know, uh, who knows? Yep. And know those numbers that. will literally fluctuate every year, yeah. depending on basically what they help us with in the study. And when we're not in a certification year, what the market says, because your home value determines mm -hmm. in the end what that number is going to be. Well, I think it's, that after I think that's the a good idea out, that we should do that. So the, and the form that we use is a state form or is it a local? Yeah, it's a, no, it's an actual, we have to be exact. It's the form mm -hmm. 2HF. Okay. Yeah, they make sure they will, they'll ask for during certification, they'll want to see our cover letter, the actual form we sent out and a copy of the spreadsheet that came up with that percentage. And we'll go from there. But I think I, I've always wanted to be a little bit more you know, because when I honestly, when I have meetings with other assessors and they're using four to six percent, when I first started here mm. you know, 27 years ago, it was four percent. All of a sudden, it's been two percent for the last two reval cycles. And I just feel like we're not getting the the number back that we should. Mm. And again, you you know, I mean, people are listing the what they feel is the estimated value there even you know, if we got 600 of them back i mean who are we to say that that's not the you know we're not hiring a company to take those forms of lists and come up with a, mm. a true value we're taking their word for it 
And um, and again, I will be the first to say this. This is a form that I personally would never want to see in the mail, but it's our jobs and we have to send these out. And it's a state requirement to do a, a study when you have this many second homeowners. So has the state ever said our 2% is a little low? No. Okay. No. And again, um, 2% on the building values that we have in town right. isn't really that bad. Right. I mean, and typically when I, uh, and I did panic because when we were first running through the report, I saw 1% come up and I'm like, oh God, you know, I mean, that may send a signal that, and, and, and then you'll see even with the return amount, just you have a bunch of zeros as a percentage, meaning that they really didn't fill the forms out at all. We, we base, it was basically whatever I can do just to send the, get this form back to you guys. And once we get it back, you know, if we have more time and we know where we're going with this, we may want to be like, well, you know, it's hard to question these things and people's integrity and putting them, because we've had some that really go above and beyond the call of duty. I mean, it's absolutely incredible, the listings that we get back. And I feel, well, look how much effort was mm. was put into that one, which makes our study so much more accurate. And I, and I didn't ever have to do a study when I first started here. This was something that the DOR is, you know, I think that realizing that, wow, you've got so many second homeowners here and it doesn't really change that much from year to year. That's a good idea though. We should definitely put that on the agenda when we get closer to, and hopefully, you know, I think it'll go through fine this year, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if the state says, you know, you might wanna do it in piecemeal, you know, if you hear, you know, certain percentage a year or do what Gary said, change it up and, you know, at least try to get 75% back. They do ask for the number of forms that went out and the number of forms mm -hmm. that came back. And if they, if they keep seeing on our work plan that it's almost identical from study to study, that may send a red flag up. And I, I won't know yet for a few weeks. So that part is, that's a big part that's done. The so, um, following up on Gary's suggestion that we send out a notice explaining what it's all about. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea. Would we send that out prior to our sending out the official notice so they have a heads up and can plan ahead or when we send out the official? Typically we send the, the cover letter and the form together, but we could always, you know, make sure that we post it ahead of time. You know, once we are in charge of everything that we can put, they're supposed to change the website where we're able to put whatever we want notices and forms and everything we haven't gotten the instructions on how to do that yet the town website i mean mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep right Tammy. that that was supposed to be revamped i think so so we can but that that was coming up at our staff meetings on i think we're going to get some training on how to do that and i would like a lot more stuff to go out there now that's mm -hmm. a subject for a different day but i think there's um a lot of a lot of things that have come up that we can we can address but that that so yeah we, we definitely send a cover letter the form and definitely make sure we have enough postage and everything else to resend and get more back mm -hmm. we were just under a time crunch this time we need to, to to send out a whole nother batch um would have been almost impossible right now yeah and that's so when should... does the form go out like the forms usually if you're when you're in a certification year so this year certification year is fiscal year 23 we typically said you have to wait until the that full year is up so the the earliest you can or the previous year has finished because it, it coincides with our business forms of less so the assessment date is january 1st um business and second homeowners so the quickest we can send them out is like the second week in or first week in january you know of for that fiscal year that's coming up and that's when we sent them. We sent them out in uh, mid-January. So would it be possible when we send out the fall or the uh, the bills at the end of this year to for second homeowners to send out that heads up in terms of the evaluation of personal property? Well, that the thing is, we don't do it every year, Tom. I know that. But it only gets done. Time. Right. I mean, we could send them a, you know, it, it our revals are now every five years instead of every three mm -hmm. years. That changes things too. Mm -hmm. But the personal property study has always been every five years, regardless of what 
year your certification falls on. And, and to include it in the tax bill would be a problematic from a logistic way. Yes. Because we really only want to send a letter to the people that are affected and to right. send it to the entire tax base might get people confused. Yep. And, we, and we're, we're only allowed so many, I mean, if the town has another flyer that's going in, you can only put four things in an envelope for it to, to, to go out the bulk rate mm -hmm. that they use. So we always say, you know, whatever you guys have to put in there and there might be something in there about the, um, the water just the, or the district, the new district around the not water district, but what they're doing in Beechwood, their tax district. Um, there might be a flyer in there because it has to be, I believe that charge has to be on the bill this year. Um, I think that was approved at town meeting. They're gonna have their own tax, I'm tax not sure. district in, in Beechwood. Now that's a private tax. Well, it, it's a tax that will be on the, actually be on the tax bill because they bill out, I don't know the exact logistics, Mike could explain it better, um, but I know that Christine and, and Erica are gonna have to have a list of a amount that actually goes on the tax bills. They're gonna have to put it in. I don't, I don't really know much about this. I just know it came up in conversation last week. I didn't realize that it had actually passed at the town meeting. So, yeah, I'm unfamiliar with it too. I was at the town meeting, but I don't remember. So this is a tax mm -hmm. being collected by the town. Right. And does the money stay in the town? I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't want to really comment because I don't really know the logistics of I it. I forgot all about that, but I, I think that we're doing it as a... Uh, I thought it was like a betterment so is, type is, thing, is, is, but is, I don't think it, it is. Doesn't, I don't think it goes to the town. It goes no. to a, an account for Beachwood. Because I guess they they have billed their um members their members and they haven't gotten a yes. good return so this was their way of making sure that it, if it's on the tax bill that has to be paid with the tax i'm pretty sure that, i mean this is the first i've ever I wonder seen it done here so it'll be very interesting to make you know see, because we're going to have to commit i'm pretty sure that if it's a tax on the bill that means that it'll become part of our commitment when we do it, it whatever amount adds up at the end of the commitment, we have to commit that amount. I gotta have to find out about it because I'm not really, I just found out last week realizing that it actually passed. I'm not sure about that, Mike, because I think that it's a, it's a, it's entirely separate from right. the town. Yeah, I think so too. So it doesn't go in the town's coffers. Right, so. I think this is more of a, let us help you out mm -hmm. getting your money. Yep. And all of those roads are privately owned. And it's probably so. So that's probably that, you know, if you're going to have it plowed in the winter time, come on up with the money. Yeah, and they haven't been. So this is the way of helping out. This town sewer in there. And mm -hmm. it's relative to the new town sewer. So yeah. it's not this is the there. first time it's, I think this has ever yeah. been in, in play. Well, and maybe if you could do a little more <laughs> research for us, just that we're knowledgeable. Yeah. I was going to talk to Erica about it today because I thought, how do we do this? You mm -hmm. know, does it, do we just skip it? I mean, because any total you put on your, on your on your bill, they would have to make sure if if it prints on the total page, we either have to be told to ignore it. The moment you commit it, it it is a collection, though. I mean, I mean, they're collecting it somehow. You know, I mean, if it's on the tax bill, someone comes in to pay their bill or write a check. Yeah. It's a separate amount, and I don't. I've never been involved where you ignore an amount that's on a commitment. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is, you know what I mean? It's like you have to deal with an abatement associated with that specific line item. I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. Because their I don't know. thing is not based on our bill. No, it has nothing to do with their uh, with valuation. This is this is basically it's written into all of their deeds that they are to, almost like that they're HOA to contribute to this pays, amount. These are HOA fee that they can't collect, so they're going. That's exact. That's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I'm surprised that the town gets involved. But. Yeah, I, I just found out last week that I, and, and of course I <laughs> immediately panicked because I thought, well, how is this going to happen on the commitment? You know, water liens, betterments, CPA amount. Uh, if you were to, if the town were to incur the cost of tearing down a property, the lien can be, you, know, you can lien that on the tax bill. We used to do that in North Adams all the time. And I think we did it for the gun property here at one point. Yeah. That can all appear on a bill, but I've never 
I'm very curious, how do you handle all of these amounts that are going to be added to the actual bill? And it will total it up and print it on a, a total sheet at the end of the commitment. We either ignore it or we commit it because I don't think they can accept that money without a commitment from you guys. You know, you're committing it to them to actually collect. They can't collect a dime without your commitment. Well, ask Mike and then. Yeah, we'll find out about it. I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that that, that I'm, I'm glad it happened. Look, they'll get their money. Yeah, well, well this thing is, that was at the town meeting, and I didn't see that one back. I forgot about it, but I, I, I do. Now that Mike's brought it up, I remember it. I just don't remember all the. <clears throat> so um, getting back to the certification, so I. I will be calling Joe, Joe will be calling me and I'll be giving him the date that I'm done next week. And that should be plenty of time to get things rolling. And again, last the last meeting that we had, we discussed the timeline for everything. If the certification goes OK, and at this point, you know, there might be some questions about what I did around the bowl and some of the sales that we coded out. Nothing unusual, I don't think. Um, but Joe does have a new person that's running the show, so he may be looking for other things. But as far as like the workload and everything, um, you know, I'm ready to let go of this and be certified. So as soon as we get certification, I've already made it clear that um, I told Mike, you know, we have to do public disclosure and uh, the, the new values once we get certified or preliminary certification, we they haven't changed this procedure. I wish they would, but they haven't. We have to notify by mail. Tammy and I will work on them together. Everyone's new value outside of the zip code, uh, outside of the 01262 zip code. So we'll probably be sending close to 900 mailers out. Um, I would say I'm hoping, you know, early to mid September. And as um, soon as that gets done, the um, I've plugged in utility values. All the personal property accounts are in. I'm still waiting on the appraisal for the Glendale Power. I just got to send him a reminder. I'm sure I'll have it by the end of the week. And then I'll wait for Joe to tell me when he's going to be out here. Although he did tell me we could do everything over Zoom. And I just PDF everything and get mm -hmm. it to them that way. So the inf once those new values are determined, those values are not uploaded to our website until sometime in the future. When we get um, when we get preliminary certification, Tammy's actually has to have a, a couple books in front of her that have everyone's value. So if someone comes in, if you guys want to come in, anybody comes in and wants to look at those books, compare their neighbors' values, or we have to give that information out so again the books are going to have the new information but the website's going to have the old information yeah you mean that we can actually uh upload a pdf of that report well no i meant like if you go to the the this eai yeah that that's the access yeah yeah that because so, so those in order to cars. upload that because now we're exclusively even though i did the sales analysis on the old system we are not calculating the new values on the old system anymore that as of this moment i if i run a report which actually comes in kind of handy because someone a second homeowner had asked for a um a report and you asked for the report for the for, for the fire department i actually ran that from the old system because i've updated all the ownership changes on there valuations now those are all calculated yeah. on the new yeah. system and at this moment we don't have a link that was one of the articles that was going to be paid for through our overlay account. As soon as we get preliminary, I'm going to call them and say, we're getting close to having our final certification. Can you possibly work on that link so we can upload not just the all the ownership changes are uploaded, but the valuations are still the old values. So hopefully, what was that, like an $1,800 charge to, to do that, but we already have the money for it. So we'll be able to do that. So the bottom line is that the GIS values are wrong. Don't go there for those. Yeah, those are still fiscal 22 and they're gonna remain fiscal 22 all through the preliminary certification. But we, like I said, we definitely should post a, a, the same listing that I'll give Tammy with everyone's value as a PDF. So they can, well, we can post it by location, sort it by location, sort it by owner and map and lot and give people three options to look at 
those reports because the public disclosure is not just for the second homeowners, it's for everybody. Anyone can come in at that, it'll be a three week period and come in and see what we did with their valuation, request the sales that we used, um, have us explain the methodology that we use. It's basically uh, the reason that we don't, we do a public disclosure the way we're doing it. And the other option is you actually set up appointments and have people come in and meet with you guys individually to discuss their value. Now, as soon as, as soon as we do all of the time period, three week period, we then submit for final certification. As soon as we get final certification, we're on a regular year. So wherever we end up, whatever month we end up in, it's gonna be a race to the finish line to get the class. Uh, luckily the state changed the amount of time we now have between the setting of the new growth. We literally can call a meeting within 48 hours now. It's no longer a two week period for the tax classification, which is great. Um, so yeah, I mean, so right now, cause I have gotten quite a few, um, inquiries from second homeowners about when the tax classification is because of the residential exemption and uh, discussions about it. And my, my routine is uh, when we know, you'll know, because we don't know. I mean, we're, we're, this is not something you can schedule ahead of time. And if we even tried it, the state would be like, we're, you're not even close. You know, We've got to go through the procedures for this. So hopefully, everything will go smooth you know between next week and getting the once you get your preliminary certification unless something is wrong that we find on our end by doing the um you know listening to people calling in explaining the value if we were to find something that we thought needed to be changed there's a form la10 that we have to file with the state but as far as the state's concerned once preliminary is done Okay. They don't really need to hear from us until we're ready to submit our new growth. That was, that was a good update. <laughs> so number three, Doug, I took all the questions that you sent and I, re, I retyped. I think it's great. I think these 11 are really good. And I think it covers, I did get a copy to Tom. So I typed them up and it, you know, it's exactly the way that you had changed it. All I added down below and we can take that out is if they have any other things they want to add. And I thought in the actual letter that goes with this, that's whatever date you guys want this back for, we need to give them a deadline. Did you want to go through each question or no? I don't think we need to do that. We've got it here. Okay. So, and I think we just need to have clear direction about did you run this by? Um... Not yet. Okay. No, I wanted to I show it to you guys it. first, right. and yes. then send it to her. Yeah. Well, that's but we need to get clear direction on. They should be answering this question as of seven one. Oh, okay. Two thousand twenty two. As of now, as of in the future, I think town council is going to say this is really the date of assessment seven one. So I think in the in the cover letter it might say please answer yep. this question. Please answer this question thinking back to how you were operating on such and such a date. Right, that is the exemption date. Yeah. Mm. You know, and typically, she, I, I'm sure she's going to come back and say, "Well, there is that period of time that you guys can give them. That if everything is look, this is this is what we plan on doing in the future. Remember what we did with High Meadows? It was the same thing. It was well, what do you, it was a grace period that was given, but they never came back. Yeah. They never did what initially was brought up or what you guys suggested that they do. I think this is similar um, in something like that, but still the assessment date is July 1st for exemptions. And the other question- And these really should relate back to that date, but I can check it. And the other question I'd like to have answer from town council is a vacant building. Is a vacant building- mm -hmm. um, Well, that's gonna cover not just this one. <laughs> Something no, but, but, but yeah, but yeah, is a vacant building to be used in the future in a nonprofit way, something that can be exempt or it might be very clear and I, I don't really know. Okay. And then she may want to add a couple, you know, who knows? Yeah. Or she'll want to yeah. take a couple out or whatever. Okay. Okay. Yep. And that's really it. Um, until we get to. 
Is anybody else on? Senator yeah. Barron is on. Okay. <clears throat> so there is somebody that zoomed in. Sure. Um, Do you want to add to see if they have any questions? Sure. What was the name? Sandra Barron is who's on here. Oh. Sandra, did you have a question for us or a comment? Yeah, guess not. She's muted, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> She's on mute. Maybe you might instruct her to come she, off. Mute. Sorry about that. Um, okay. okay. If I, I, I should have tuned in early. I am a part time resident of Stockbridge. And um, I am obviously interested in everything you were discussing. So I hope the tape of this meeting is going to be available from CTSB. Uh, oh, it will be. Great, because um, uh, one, I should say, if the gentleman I'm looking at on the left is the town assessor. That's um, me. That's Mike, yeah. I have nothing but the greatest of respect for you, sir. Um, oh, thank you. Know, Having had one dealing with you personally, I found you to be extremely thoughtful, extremely clear, and um, you convinced me immediately of the rightness of your assessment. So um, I was impressed. Um, but I am going to suggest, um, gentlemen and lady, that that um, I, I, I uh, my call, my fellow part-time residents. Uh, take a look at the tape of this meeting because clearly I missed something at the top uh, that you were talking about that has direct engagement with us. Um, um, and that form that went out that asks us to identify all of our linens um, to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'm, I, that's who I am I'm, and it's no mystery and, and I'm glad to be able to listen in to what you're engaged with. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think the tape explains the personal yeah. property really well, so. Okay, then. So we're all set with our input or yes. the regular business. Uh, so this concludes um, the public piece of our meeting. Um, so at this point, I would uh, ask for a motion to go into executive session per Massachusetts General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to discuss the property tax exempt status for several properties, uh, and to and also to say that when we're done with the executive session. Uh, we will then vote to go out of ex executive session and we will not return to a public meeting. So I need oh, a motion. So moved. Sorry. Second. Tom is seconded. All those in favor? Chair votes aye. 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 That carries.